Hi, and welcome to a series on the weaving of St. Bridget's Crosses. In this video, I will talk about the tradition of cross weaving. I'm excited to show you museum footage of historic examples. Besides sharing how I prepare my rushes, to show you how to make the six different types of crosses in the following videos. In ancient times, on the 1st of February, the pagan festival of Imbolc was celebrated. The festival was associated with Bridget, the goddess of fertility, learning and healing. Imbolc marked the first day of spring, the beginning of the lambing season and a new agricultural year. For Christians, the 1st of February is the feast day of St. Bridget, the patroness saint of Ireland. St. Bridget is said to have lived in the 5th and 6th century and allegedly explained the crucifixion of Jesus and the meaning of the cross at the deathbed of a pagan by weaving a cross from the rushes that covered the third floor of the house. The pagan then asked to be baptized and the weaving of crosses in St. Bridget's honor became the most widespread custom connected with St. Bridget's Eve. The crosses are woven to invoke the saint's blessing and protection against fire, storm, lightning and evil spirits for the year ahead. And they are typically hung from the rafters near the entrance of the home and some also in the stable and byre to protect the livestock. For anyone who would like to see examples of St. Bridget's crosses from before the mid 20th century, I highly recommend paying a visit to the National Museum of Country Life in Turlock, County Mayo. They are exhibited in numerous shapes and sizes, made from rushes, straw and even wood, that were collected from across the country in a questionnaire on the Feast of St. Bridget, conducted by the Folklore of Ireland Commission in 1942. As part of this questionnaire, hundreds of crosses were sent to the Commission. A big thank you to Deirdre at this point for the lovely museum tour, dedicated to the traditions around St. Bridget's Day where she provided a fascinating insight into Irish crafts and customs. Rushes are typically found on wet and ill-drained land. My tutorials on the weaving are going to focus solely on the use of rushes, as opposed to straw or other materials. But if you have no access to rushes, you can follow along using whatever you have available. I heard that rushes for weaving crosses should be pulled rather than cut. But the evening I collected them to make all of my crosses was a particularly frosty one. So I just cut them with scissors as quickly and as close to the ground as possible. Once home, I sorted my bundle by pulling out all rushes that were no longer fresh and green. I separated them into thinner and thicker ones and removed all that weren't straight. If you are not going to use your rushes right away, you can easily keep them fresh for several days by just keeping them covered and moist. Just remember that the heating in our modern homes lets the most lusciously green rushes dry out in just a few days. Here are three examples. The one on the left is a freshly made cross. The one in the center is about two weeks old and the one on the far right has been hanging in my home for two years. The crosses will shrink and fade but as long as you weave them tightly, they will actually maintain their beauty and charm. I just gathered my old crosses from around the house to burn them in the stove. So I can finally start making the six different types and show you how to make them yourself. Weaving these is quite relaxing and also fun as a group activity. And I hope the videos linked in the description below will inspire you to get weaving crosses and keep the tradition of making St. Bridget's crosses alive and vibrant.